In this video, we're going to look at perfect have and progressive be. So perfect have is demonstrated in the following three sentences. I have eaten steak. James had fallen off of the roof. Mark will have stolen two paychecks. Let's take a look at the present perfect first. I have eaten. So why do we need this perfect? Well, as you can see, there is still a main verb in the sentence. So here's our main verb, eat, and it carries some morphology on it. So this en suffix. And before it, we have this other verb, have. This is the perfect have, I have eaten, meaning previously some eating occurred and that eating was with steak. This is the present perfect because have is in the present tense and the verb eaten has this perfect morphology on it. In the second sentence, James had fallen off of the roof. This is the past perfect because of course had is in our past tense and once again, we see fall is the main verb, and it has this en morphology on the end of it. What about in the third sentence? Mark will have stolen two paychecks. Well, this is future. Even though the perfect have on its own doesn't have future tense, it has this will coming before it, which would be in t, of course, just like before. But it precedes have, meaning it's the future perfect. So the question is, we already have a main verb, so what do we put this perfect have under? In this third sentence, we see that we have will going under t, and then stole is going to go under v, so we have this intermediary word. So what kind of phrase do we put it under? Well, it's pretty straightforward. We put it under the perf p, or perfect phrase. Some textbooks and some models of syntax, what they'll do is they'll do two vps. They'll do a vp that goes into the perfect, so they call it vperf, and it just goes to another vp, so on. But to make it very clear, I will call it the perf p for the perfect phrase. So here I have the sentence, Mark had eaten steak. So I've filled in the stuff that we already know, so Mark is the subject of the sentence, steak is the object, eat is the verb. So the question is, well, the perfect carries some morphology on it, and it also carries the word have. So this perf head does something that we haven't really seen before, and it splits itself into two. Okay, so the left side has the verb have, and the right side has morphology. So here's our en. So how do we get the word order right? Well, first of all, this is present tense have, but have moves up to t to get tense, and this becomes had, so we end up with had up here. And the en suffix goes down to the verb and attaches to it. So we would get the sentence, Mark had eaten steak. So this is how we work with the perfect phrase. Now let's take a look at the progressive B. I will be eating steak. In this example, we have eat being the main verb yet again. In the second sentence, I have been eating steak. Well, here's something interesting. We have the perfect and we have the progressive. But what do we notice? We notice that the perfect morphology is now on the progressive and the progressive morphology, this ing, is on the main verb. Similarly, in the first sentence, I will be eating. This ing suffix is a progressive suffix. Okay, the third example, you are dancing. Again, this is just another form of be, and we see this ing suffix at the end signalizing that it's progressive. Signalizing, is that a word? I don't think it is. Signifying that it is progressive. So how do we do it with this tree? Well, the same thing as the perfect phrase. We just stick in a prog p for progressive. So here we have I will eat steak, and we want I will be eating steak. So what do we do? It's just like the perfect phrase. This splits into two at the progressive head, into B, and then an ing suffix. Now what happens? Well, in the previous example, B moved up to T, but T is already occupied, so B will stay where it is, but this ing suffix will still move down, and this will become eating. So now we have I will be eating steak. So this really isn't too complicated. 
But I'm sure you're wondering, well, what happens when we have both? Well, here's what happens where we have both. We want the sentence, I had been eating. So we end up with I as the subject, eat as the main verb, and then we have the perfect phrase and the progressive phase. So in English, the perfect phrase always comes before the progressive phrase. So let's just do what we've done before. Perfect splits into have and the en suffix. Progressive splits into be and the ing suffix. Okay, so have moves up to t to get past tense and that becomes had. This en suffix, well, it can't move down to the verb because there's another intervening verb, which would be the progressive be. So it just moves down and attaches to the progressive be. Finally, this ing suffix moves to eating. And now we have the sentence, I had been eating. So what's really happening with these progressive and perfects is they are syntactic categories that carry morphology and one side moves up if it if t is empty so the perfect phrase will move up if t is empty and the morphology will move down to the verb if there's both the perfect and progressive then the perfect will be on top progressive on the bottom and the morphology will just move in a chain so the perfect will go down to the progressive and the progressive will go down to the vp if you have any questions about perfects and progressives, please leave them in the comments below and I will answer them the best that I can.